that one time when people thought witches actually existed? Pretty silly, right? So silly, in fact, that colonists held trials that ended up with at least 19 people killed because idiots thought magic was real. Ignorance is a dangerous thing, and in the year of 1692, the fear of witchcraft, not uncommon back then, had hit fever pitch in the colonies. A few girls from the village of Salem claimed to be possessed and blamed some of the women, declaring them witches. This snowballed into a wave of hysteria that hit the little village and the neighboring town, also known as Salem. Forever known for the horrific history of superstition and paranoia that led to tragic deaths of innocent people, this infamous horrific event in the early days of American history was known as the Salem witch trials. But if you were to visit modern day Salem today, you can buy overpriced witch hats and get drunk on ghost tours. Salem does not hide from its history. They're going to sell it to you any way they can. It's a modern day tourist trap decked out in a Halloween costume year round. Fact is, if these trials didn't take place, it's likely that Salem would be just another of many little towns in the New England area. And that's what we're visiting today. Hop in nerds, we're going on a gamecation. First, we have the game titled Salem, which describes itself as a craftable MMO. It's loosely based on the 17th century colonial America, and you can find hints of the supernatural associated with that area, namely crafts of the love and witch variety. There's farming, crafting, and all kinds of fun stuff, but nothing that technically takes place in old school Salem. So not much for us to really talk about, but if it looks interesting, you can play for free in your browser right now. There's also Town of Salem, available on mobile devices, Steam, or again, on the browser. This is inspired by all the hysteria back in the day, and also has dudes in suits, werewolves, and jesters. Going by what I've been reading, it sounds like it could be fun, but again, I'm only really bringing it up because of the name. Outside of the inspiration to the gameplay, there's not much of real-world Salem in either of these games. Nothing against the quality of them. I'm hearing they're pretty good, but uh, not what we're looking for today. Honestly, when it comes to Salem, you'll find a lot of stuff on mobile devices, but again, it's very, very loosely based on the witch trials, and most of it looks like crap. The best I could really find having to do with the actual witch trials was Hidden Mysteries Salem Secrets, which is available on just about every device except for consoles. There is a Nintendo DS copy I've tracked down, but uh, look guys, you're not watching this video for a hidden objects game. It's here if you care, and you you probably don't care. I don't care. Yell me for being dismissive, I, I, I don't care. Before we move on to games you might actually want to play, I do need to make special mention of Nancy Drew, Midnight in Salem, the latest in the surprisingly long-lasting Nancy Drew video game series. I've only been slightly aware of them through the years, and of course I know Nancy Drew is a thing, but apparently this is the 33rd game in the series. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Nancy Drew fans are a big fan of this, and quite frankly, I'm not either. It's pretty shoddy, which is surprising because apparently this thing's been in development since like 2015. The game's made up of simple puzzles, bad voice acting, horrible Unity graphics, and uh, pancake flipping. The game actually starts you off in Europe, and as you insert of the Book of Apologies. And what's inside this alleged book? Well, it's supposed to be about a lot of things, but usually ends up just being about Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know if this desk or any of these other effects are actually real-world items, but this was still pretty cool. And does make light mention of the original witch trials that took place in Europe before they made their ways to the colonies. But as Nancy discovers the book, it's quickly stolen, and having Nancy give chase, um, by a... I... <laughs> this is thrilling. Well, the thief escapes, and at the same time, her rival lover friend, I don't know what her deal is, this Deidre Shannon lady, gives Nancy a call, asking for her help in Salem, Massachusetts. Well, just so happens, our thief with ninja smoke bombs left behind a torn ticket to the Boston airport. So, uh, that's where Nancy's off to. As you arrive, Miss Shannon here quickly acts dismissive of Nancy, even though she's the one who wanted her to show up. I, I, I really don't get what their deal is. And Miss Shannon's cousins look almost exactly like her. So, uh, good job on the developers for basically reusing assets to make these stilted, terrible looking characters. Honestly, putting the boring puzzles aside, I can get behind some goofy little mini games, but most of this game is taken up with static, boring bits of dialogue. Seriously, this game feels like it's made up entirely of Fallout 3 conversations. But thankfully, they put a little more effort into the environment around you. Man, that's what we're here to talk about, after all. 
This, surprisingly, is one of the better interpretations of a modern day Salem. There's not much of it, mind you, but still you get to check out the little town square, the lobby of the Museum of History, and even its famous old cemetery, getting to awkwardly explore and experience some of the history of this town. And they did their research. Like, if I didn't know this was a Nancy Drew game and you had told me that this thing was put together in like six months by the tourism board of Salem, I'd probably believe you. Still, that doesn't make this a pleasant experience of a game. But if you're a fan of the town, I do think you at least owe it to yourself to check it out. It's not good with the mystery, but it's all right with the history. I promise this video isn't just me poo-pooing every title and barely telling you anything about it. Truth is, there's just not a whole lot of Salem in games, modern or otherwise, but it did show up in a few spots, and interesting ones at that, so let's get into it. This should come as no surprise to gamers, but we have to talk about the rather obvious choice, Fallout 4. This is a post-apocalyptic take on the area. And while the actual town itself really isn't anything noteworthy, all you really do is shoot mutant crabs, there is a special little spot that any player of the game will likely remember, the Museum of Witchcraft. Which is less of a museum and more of a haunted house tour. As you make your way through the basement, you'll have little jump scares in the form of falling corpses, mannequins, and large lumbering footsteps coming from above. What could this be? What sort of horrific monster could be hiding just in the shadow? It's a death claw. I mean, what else was it gonna be? The Witchcraft Museum is of course inspired by the real world Salem Witch Museum, the most popular of the museums in the town. Like the game, it does indeed feature creepy mannequins, but uh, well they do a better job of the upkeep. The museum is a wonderful resource for the history of the actual trials and an absolute must see for anyone visiting Salem. And maybe Fallout 4 could have done a bit more with the town, but in my opinion, they did a pretty decent job with the museum, making it memorable in its own way. Also, little factoid, you might notice one of these mannequins is being burned at the stake, a popular image associated with the trials, but none of the executions that took place were by burning. Almost all the executions were hung by the neck instead. This was a common practice for the European witch hunts, so while the colonists did bring over their superstitions, at least they didn't bring over every single way they acted upon it, so uh, silver linings I guess. Now, like I said in the last episode, we will be seeing the crew quite a few times on this show when it comes to gamecations set in the United States, as the map is just a super condensed version of the country. But it doesn't look like I've explored that region of the map on my PC copy of the game, so we'll just have to make our way over there. And would you look at that? The traffic here is much better than the real world Massachusetts, so you can enjoy a nice, serene, scenic drive through the northeastern portion of the map without issue. I see. Yeah, I, I tend to forget that this is still a video game, so sometimes you have races, time trials, or you get chased down by the cops. <laughs> We're not gonna let a silly little thing like the law stop us from enjoying the sights, are we? As you can see, the game's rendition of Salem mostly consists of the famous town square, with the Witch Museum prominently standing out among all the New England-style homes and shops. And you might also take note of all the jack-o'-lanterns on all the houses and street corners adorning the banners. And the town itself is surrounded by pumpkin fields, which I don't believe is true because the area is choked out with people. But you really have to appreciate the attention to dig. No! No! Get off me! I've done nothing wrong! I'm innocent! I'm innocent! This is a witch hunt! A witch hunt! That, you, you see what I did there? You get it? Because witch hunt? It's gonna, you remember that time they killed people? Because... Oh boy. Seriously though, while it's only a few streets, I was actually impressed with the crew this time around. The town is located in an area called Salem Woods, which is the name of an actual park in Salem. And I believe they even place some of the many historic houses around this town, including the famous witch house. This house is the only remaining standing structure from the days of the Salem witch trials, and was once home to Judge Jonathan Corwin, one of the men who oversaw the many witch trials which led to the many executions. It's kind of great that nowadays it's known as a witch house, isn't it? Also, it looks like there's a giant green sign if you'd see on the highway, just push right up against the building here. Maybe that's here to represent the real life witch house sign? I don't know. Whatever the case, it's pretty awesome to find this unique structure in this game. And uh, oh, apparently the judge had a few unique structures stand the test of time just fine in the universe of the crew. So yeah, they duplicate a lot of structures here, but I still am seeing stuff that looks pretty recognizable, such as the Gendy house, the Derby house, or Nar Narbonne house. I don't know if I'm saying any of those right. They're all famous for 
being old, basically. I also found this statue close to the water's edge that could represent Nathaniel Hawthorne, the author of The Scarlet Letter, The House of Seven Gables, and others. Born in Salem well past the witch trials, but still having a connection with his ancestor John Hawthorne, the only judge who never repented for his role in the trials. But, well, if this is the statue, it's in the entirely wrong place. You place statues next to water when the person in question has some kind of connection to the water. And the New England area has plenty of those. This particular statue is probably here to represent the fact that the real Salem has a lot of statues, including this crazy interpretation of the town founder, Darth Pilgrim. Shame they didn't bring that awesome bewitched statue into the game. Maybe we would find similar statues and houses in other towns around here if we explored the map a little bit more, but even though I've only seen the real town for one day in real life, when I drove into the crew's rendition for the first time, there was no mistaking that this was supposed to be Salem. Good job, everyone. Now, let's move on to our final stop for the day. While this has been a surprisingly short trip, thankfully the last game on our list has all the Salem you could ever ask for in a video game. Murdered Soul Suspect. Here you have to play the ghost of a Salem detective who has to solve his own murder. Now guys, I gotta tell you, I was super interested in this game's premise when it first came out a few years ago, but due to the negative and middling reviews it was getting, I decided to pass it up. And that's a shame because this turned out to be an interesting little title. This is a 3D semi-open world quasi-action adventure game. And like the Bureau in my Area 51 episode, I did not want to put this game down once I started playing it for this episode. And I found myself writing a whole slew of notes. So yeah, expect this to have its own Game Apologies episode. But we're not here to look for the good in bad games. We're on a gamecation. We're here to take in the scenery and history and... Frustratingly... Almost all of it's completely fake. Yep, they named it after the real place, have plaques everywhere recounting the town's history, and as far as I can tell, almost all of it is BS. There's no sinister church overlooking the water or historic gas station, and the police station certainly doesn't look like this. Regardless, I did find some locations that absolutely took inspiration from the real world Salem. Ashland Cemetery in the game is probably a super spooky version of the real world Old Burying Point Cemetery, the final resting place for the likes of many prominent figures of Salem history. Strangely enough, these recent photos I found from users on TripAdvisor reminded me a lot of this ghostly halfway house you explore in the game. And while there are certainly museums and tours all over the place in actual Salem, none of them are quite as huge as the one we find in the game, which has a gala going on, and an original gallows used in the trials. That's surprisingly sturdy. The museum does actually have some real facts sprinkled among the fiction, dropping names of judges and victims here and there, and even showing off the torture devices, with different levels of reality applied depending on what sources you look into. And later on, the game will also call out John Hathorne by name, claiming him the owner of the Judgment House. Now, I don't want to get too much into it because this is later in the game and I don't want to give you guys any spoilers, but there is no actual Judgment House. This is likely a collection of real world locations in the town and some of its more prominent myths. The in-game version claims that this used to be the judge's house, where he would sometimes hold trials and keep some of the accused in his wine cellar slash dungeon. Now, how much of that's actually true? Well, we could go down quite the rabbit hole when it comes to the trials. But like I said, in the real world, there is no actual place called Judgment House. But it likely got its name from the real world Judge House or Witch House, which we previously spoke about. The interior is likely inspired by the many mansions dotted around the town. You could also say the apartments in the game might resemble the real world Hawthorne Hotel, which many claim is haunted, and look, long and short of it, they stray quite a ways away from the actual Salem. But for what they created, that's just fine. A lot of these places are what you'd want Salem to be. Look, we're all interested in the gory history, and we all love Halloween for a reason. There's no shame in that. While the real town is an absolute blast, it is a tourist town. You're not going to find actual abandoned mansions from the 1600s, or deserted misty streets, or an eerie mystery revolving around a serial killer that may or may not have some connection with the witch trials. You'll instead have shops and tours jam-packed with people. And again, that's completely fine, but what Soul Suspect provides is still noteworthy on its own. You can see all the inspirations from the real history all over the game, and it's cool to see what the developers came up with. Since you are playing a ghost, you get to see remnants of the old town through the decades meshed together with a modern one. It's a really cool take on the town, and one I highly, highly recommend you take a tour through yourself. But that brings us to the end of our journey through Salem in video games. For such a little town, it's jam-packed with history and stories stories to tell, and we have barely scratched the surface here. So if you know any other games I might have missed, just let me know. Give me an excuse to come back here. Salem is a fascinating little town, and while I joked up front that modern day Salem might seem to disregard these violent acts and mock their memory, personally I feel like that's far from the case. Modern Salem is 
is no longer a hive of prejudice and ignorance. They took that horrible identity and transformed it into a celebration of the supernatural. Over the centuries, what it means to be a witch has either changed in the eyes of pop culture, or old world teachings have endured, and in the case of Salem, are now celebrated. That's what makes this town so special. Is it a tourist trap? Yeah, sure. But the reasons we're drawn there are fascinating. This little town has embraced its history and made an identity unique to any other town in the United States. And however you decide to visit this iconic location, it won't be a trip you soon forget. And that brings us to the end of our journey. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Gamecation, and I hope you enjoyed the ride.